We speak to our pets like our pals with a countenance as if we understand each other. At times they respond in the manner we expect and maybe at times they don't. It's usually casually debated if we can really talk to pets and have them understand us. Find out in this video if you can really talk to your pets like you'd speak to other people. Welcome back everyone to Blazing Zone, where we discuss intriguing and interesting facts about animals. But before we proceed, kindly hit the red subscribe button and subscribe to the channel so as to help us grow. Remember to click the notification bell to get notified every time we drop a new video. Do you ever wonder if your pets can actually understand whatever you say? Or they just follow your intonation cues and illustration? I mean, if you're going to ask your dog to go get you something, you must have signified in the direction of where to get the piece. And if she brings you the wrong piece, you ask her to return it till she gets it right. Chances are about 100% that if you give that command again, she'll bring you the right piece. So that's a little conflicting. And does it mean you can really talk to your pets? Or you don't bother about what's going on? Firstly, I think it's a human thing to want to talk to your pets because that really is our primary form of expression and communication. We generally say a lot of different things to our pets as if they understand us. We tell them good morning as if we really expect a reply. Imagine if your cat replies, good morning, Helen. Take a moment to imagine what a scenario like that would look like. As humans, we'd often find ourselves saying things like, time to eat, let's go for a walk, and so on to our pets. We are more likely to say it to our pets when we have a stressful day. It's absolutely normal and not weird in any way. Human beings are described as anthropomorphizers. Complex name, I know, but what that means is we naturally tend to ascribe all kinds of thoughts and meanings to other things in our lives. Aside from just pets, we are likely to talk angrily at our mobile phone or even smash it if the aggression warrants. Or maybe even feel bad for that spoon in your house you never get to use. But that impulse is especially strong for things that are or seem animate, like animals and AI. And when it comes to pets, people often think of them as little members of the family. So of course people talk to them, but even though it might feel like you're talking to your pets the same way you talk to other people, studies show consistent distinctions between the two. The question, can you really talk to your pets, is a bit tricky to answer because most studies regarding human communication with a pet are almost always about a dog. This is because of the long-standing bond between humans and dogs and interest in the therapeutic effects of dog companionship. When most people communicate with dogs, they do so in short, simple, grammatically correct sentences that ask the animal to do a thing. And with such communication, it should not be hard for a dog to process after repeated occurrences. There's little research on animal understanding of language, but it is quite established that dogs process language similarly to humans. And this does not particularly mean they understand it. Maybe they just recognize it. If you're speaking to your dog, for example, in long sentences, I doubt the dog understands. The most that comes out of such communication is the dog takes a cue from you. Dogs are naturally like that. They need cues from you. Cues come in the form of body movement, intonation, gesture, and so on. Pets understand the tone of your voices because they can fade emotions. Across animals, it's generally believed that high-pitched tones are associated with threatening behavior, and low-pitched tones are associated with affiliated behavior. So when you tell your pet, get away from there, that's not food, it's not the word that they understood, it's the intonation. An anthropologist, Brian Hare, did an experiment with dogs where he put a piece of food under two cups, placed several feet apart. The dog knows there is food to be had, but has no idea which of the cups holds the prize. Then Hare pointed at the right cup, tapped on it, and looked at the right cup on different occasions. And the dog goes to the right cup every time. Hare repeated this experiment with chimpanzees, who happened to share 98.6% of our genes. The chimps wouldn't get it right. This is because a dog will look at you for cues while a chimpanzee will not. Chimpanzees could use cues from their fellow species, but not with a human. That's what is special about dogs. They are students of human movement. It does not mean they are smarter than chimpanzees. They are just better with human communication. 
So if you request that your dog does something in a really long, complex sentence, and it actually did, don't go believing it understands. I don't mean to be a party pooper, but don't be quick to post that on the internet. Well, you may, but with the right caption. Does this mean you should not talk to your pets anymore? Not quite what I mean. I wouldn't ask anyone to stop speaking to their pets because speaking to them is pointless. No, that would be an ass if I do that. It's sort of an impulse when we speak to pets, and it doesn't really matter to us whether they understand or not. Those who talk to their pets likely aren't doing so because they believe those pets are processing language. They do so because they tend to see something human in them, and a pet's cuteness and responsiveness enforces that tendency. I mean, you really can't escape how cute they are that you'd want to show affection and speak to them. In fact, according to behavioral scientist Nicholas Epley, author of MindWise Why We Misunderstand What Others Think, Believe, Feel, and Want, and one of the researchers who led a particular 2008 study on human pet communication, says talking to a pet, any kind of pet, is a sign of intelligence. It's the same psychological process we use to recognize consciousness in other human beings, and he proceeds to say it is a reflection of our brain's greatest ability rather than a sign of our stupidity. One major reason we even talk to our pets so much is because most times they pretend like they understand. They get the affectionate messages we pass and really key into the cues we pass. So yes, you can really talk to your pets. Go on and ask your pet how was its day and tell it about your day too. That would be all on this video. If you enjoy my content and would like to see more of this video, kindly subscribe to my channel and help me reach a good number of subscribers. Also, remember to click the notification bell to get notified whenever I drop a new video. Bye for now, see you in the next video.